Ray may inspire you to take a look at what you can be done or what can be done when you have vacant land in blight. That's right. It's no secret that Detroit is home to both, but one company is changing that with a tasty idea. Photojournalist Alex Atwell has the uniquely Detroit story behind Detroit Vineyards. A lot of people feel that it's desolate, it's not worth trying to save something. Oh yeah, I mean in Detroit we have over 30 square miles of vacant land. You know, it's an opportunity to repurpose that land into productive, healthy space, right? It's an exciting day because you can see some change in the community. We're trying to reclaim blighted land. We have so much of it in the city, we gotta start one lot at a time with folks that wanna help. And then what do we do when we repurpose it? My idea is to plant vineyards, which we're doing already. <laughs> Why not a blight? There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I live and die for this stuff, man. Yeah. This is it. I'm, I'm a grape guy. I'm a winemaker. And so for me, this is a place you can really uh, spread your wings and, and give it a go. Uh, almost like the wild west of wine country, so to speak. I'm Blake Kanaki. I'm the winemaker and general manager of Detroit Vineyard. First winery in the city in over 60 years. So this year we have uh, American oak, and I prefer oak from Michigan or Minnesota. Great Lakes oak is the most similar to French oak, which is much more expensive. Uh, so what I'm doing is called topping. We do this on a monthly basis. Because of its porous nature, we have evaporation as well. In the industry, we call it uh, the angel's share. I love wine country, and I also love cities, specifically this city. And so in my mind, I see a fusion of the two possible with the amount of vacant land that's available in this city. Now, does it have to be sprawling acres of vineyards that you see in Napa or up in Traverse City? No. Uh, we can do micro vineyards here um, throughout, throughout the city. Now, I like the juxtaposition of vineyards with uh, an urban background. To me, that's fun and exciting. It's not something you see typically. But, I mean, some of these gorgeous old homes that we have, you know, that's a beautiful old limestone house. It, it looks like a chateau. There's no other better fruit than grapes to define an environment or translate an environment. And so what we try to do as winemakers is encapsulate our region. This is not a kitschy, cool product. This is something that can be an economic benefit to the community as a whole. It's about change, and you have to have change in order to reestablish the community. Let's put it this way. I've never met anybody that says, gosh, that's an ugly vineyard. Well, you know, I see hope. There is hope. It's unique, it's distinct, and I guess it's just like the city of Detroit. There's nothing else like it in the world. So when you have a glass of Detroit wine, you never going to taste anything else like it. And joining us now, Blake Konecki and Heather Pusta from Detroit Vineyards. Thank you both for being here today. Thank, thank you. you for having us. And thank you for pouring me 16 glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for solving the mystery for me as I've driven by some of your vineyards. And I was like, what's going on over there? I couldn't figure it out. Now I know. <laughs> So this is really exciting. So tell us about the bottles that you've brought in. So today we've brought, we brought four bottles. Um, we've brought in our 2016 Riesling Chardonnay, Cabernet Franc Rosé, and then also our Motor City Mead, which is produced from bees, hives that we have in the city of Detroit. And what makes wine mead as opposed to wine? Well, mead is produced from honey as opposed to grapes. There you have it. Okay, all right. So how many vineyards do you have now and how many hope, do you hope to have? Uh, currently, we maintain three vineyards in the city, uh, roughly a half acre worth of vines, and we look to plant about a half acre on an annual basis. Okay, so let's start tasting. Let's so we go start yes. here or start in front? So start here with okay. the Riesling. Let's you. All right. <laughs> That's all right. I'll share. <laughs> this is our 2016 Riesling. Uh, this is unique because it is fermented dry, so many people are accustomed to a sweeter style Riesling. Mm. Riesling, when it is fermented dry, is extremely food friendly. This is delicious. And I'm not, a, I, I'll drink sweet wine, but I prefer dry wine. I enjoy it much more. Well, good. well good. we try to ferment all the sugar out of all of our wines. Um, to me, I'm not a big fan of sweeter, sweeter wines. And so what we really want to do is express the fruit in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I like and that. by removing the sugar, uh, we still retain all the nice fruit profiles that exist in the wine. And we really want that to come through. I love that concept. Not that I'm a, you know, winery person, but I, yeah, too sweet is, you just don't find it as enjoyable. Okay, so what's the next one? So the next one actually we're going to try is the Cabernet Franc Rosé. Okay, we're so skipping that one going. Yeah. So the Cabernet Franc Rosé, um, obviously not your, your typical red wine, but a rosé. So we've bled just a little bit of color off mm. the skins of the grapes. 
Um, this is great going into the holiday week because it has a little bit of oak on it as well. The wine was aged in um, neutral oak and it's going to pair well with your barbecue, a lot of your, your foods that you'll be enjoying this week. Delicious. And uh, Cap Franc is kind of the rising star. We all know about Riesling here in Michigan. We're a great uh, wine region for Riesling, but Cap Franc is becoming the rising star of red wine within the state because the climate here actually suits it very, very well. We are on the 45th parallel, which is the same as uh, Bordeaux, which is the mm -hmm. most famous wine region in the world. So there are some similar aspects to our climate that uh, lend to such a lovely wine. Okay. All right, I like both of those yeah, a lot. Same here. So far. Maybe it's just because it's 1035 in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where are we going next? Well, let's go on to the mead, the okay. final one. Oh, we skipped this one, though, didn't we? We did. Okay. Good effort for time. <laughs> Okay, so the mead's up front. So this is produced from bees in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, there's hives on the east side as well. The um, bees are sourcing their pollen from wildflowers mm -hmm. in Detroit. So this is a, a wildflower honey mead that is fermented dry as well. And again, it's distinctly different in the fact that it's fermented dry. Um, so typically with the mead that you'll see, specifically from European cultures, will be quite sweet, uh, very viscous and very thick and, and, and almost a bit too much to have a glass of. Uh, so once we ferment all the sugars out, we retain all the wonderful honey flavors and profiles. You get an essence of the wildflowers. And then another thing that's distinctly different is we age it uh, for over 16 months in, uh, oh. in brand new oak barrels. Very nice. I've only had Ethiopian honey wines and that's very, very sweet as well. Yes. Yes. What were we going to say? Sorry. I, I was going like to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first three were so good, I'm disappointed we don't have time to do the fourth. Well, well we, we can jump in if you'd like. We can commercial breaks are for it. <laughs> <laughs> so about how many bottles do you produce every year? Uh, currently, our case production is 1,000 cases annually, but as of right now, we're currently remodeling the uh, Old Stroh's Ice Cream Factory on Grashen 375. Nice. 12,000 square feet of space and a 3,000 square foot tasting room will be opening, hopefully in, the, in early winter. Mm -hmm. uh, Right now, where can somebody get that Absolutely. wine that we've been tasting? At this moment, you can pick us up at Slow's Barbecue, uh, Gold Cash Gold, uh, Neiman's Market, which is in Clarkston. So if you're in Oakland County, you can grab it there. Uh, and my favorite pizza place in town, Sapino's Pizza. Woohoo! Awesome. Thank yes, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Sam, us. Still hanging on to this glass. <laughs>